Hello, this is Kevin Olson from TextLearn.com, and welcome to lesson 6.5 of the Intro to Java series. In this lesson, we will be discussing buffered streams. Now, what is a buffered stream? Well, so far we know what an input stream is and what an output stream is, and buffered streams are just kind of like a twist on those. They read bytes in groups with a buffer instead of reading the bytes individually. So in this little diagram I have over here off to the left, you can see the input stream reading the bytes individually into the program. So it reads one by one by one with individual read requests. And that bogs down the file system a little bit. It uh, slows down the program too. What the buffered input stream does is it reads all groups of bytes instead of just individually. So it might read, you know, 20 bytes at once instead of just one. And that way, it'll increase the program's performance and it'll be less demanding on the file system because instead of reading and writing each byte individually, now they're being buffered. So there's a group of bytes being read or written at, at a time. The usage is pretty simple. All we have to do is initialize the buffered input or output stream with the respective regular input or output stream. So let's open up Eclipse and take a look at this. I'm just going to create a new Java project. I'm going to call it 6 underscore 5. Give that a new class for our testing. So I'll just call this buffer test and a main method. Okay. So I want to show you how we can use the buffered input stream to read bytes from a file. So let's go ahead and try this out. So first things first, we need to have a file input stream. And I'm just going to call it input, leave it as null. And then we'll have a buffered input stream. And then we'll have a buffered input stream, bf stream. And that's also going to be null for now. The file input stream has to be imported as always, and the buffered input stream will also have to be imported. We're going to try to open those streams, so we will get a file that we're going to open. We'll say input equals new file input stream, and we'll give it the file that we want to load, and I'll just call it readme.txt. So we are going to open that file readme.txt and print its contents out to the console using a buffered stream. So now we initialize that buffered stream, BF stream, with a input stream, with the input stream. So we have our buffered stream equals new buffered input stream. And then all we have to do is pass input to that. So we're throwing the file input stream into the buffered stream. And now it is a buffered file input stream. All that's left is for us to write those, or read and write from that stream so we can do int i char c and while i is equal to bf stream dot read not equal to negative one so why we can read from that we cast that integer into a character so c equals char i and we can just use System out dot print C. And we print that out. And as always, we will have to close those streams so we can do input dot close and BF stream dot close. And we catch any exceptions that occur. E X C E P T I O N E. And we'll do E dot print stack trace. And print out the error message if something goes wrong. That looks pretty good to me. Let's give that a save. And I have to create our testing file. So we will make a new file, readme.txt, and hello world, this is a file. OK, so save that. Go ahead and run the program. And it says, hello world, this is a file. So you can see we were able to successfully use the read method of the buffered stream to read the characters from the file. So that read it with a buffer instead of just the regular way. So the usage is pretty much identical to the regular file input stream. It's just now we used a buffered input stream. Output stream works pretty much the same exact way. So let's create a 
file output stream and a buffered output stream. It will have file output stream fos equals null and buffered output stream buffered out equals null. Then we will import the file output stream and the buffered output stream from the Java IO class or package, I should have said. And let's take a look here. Okay, so fos equals new file output stream. And we have to define a file that we want that to save to. So we'll just call it out.txt. And we'll have to initialize that buffered output stream with that file. So, or the file output stream. So buffered out equals new buffered output stream fos. So now we have our buffered output stream ready to use. The only thing left is for us to determine what we want to save. So we'll have a string save me and we'll just be like save this text. So that's what we're going to save. Save that text and we'll have to have a group of bytes. So we'll have byte array save me bytes equals save me dot get bytes. And now we have those bytes being stored in that save me bytes and we can go ahead and write that to the file now. So we can use the buffered out dot write and we are going to write save me bytes to that file. So we're using the buffered output stream now to write those that string of text to the file out.txt. So now that's written, all that is left is for us to close the streams. But before we close the buffered output stream, what we should do is flush the stream. So we can do buffered out.flush. And if you take a look at the description here, it says flushes this buffered output stream. This forces any buffered output bytes to be written out to the underlying output stream. So that simply means that if there's anything left over in the stream, it flushes it and it keeps writing it. So you want to make sure you use that flush method when you're dealing with buffered streams because it's not writing individually. So if there's still a little bit left in the buffer, it'll write whatever's left in there out to that stream. So now we can go ahead and close the buffered output stream and the file output stream. So that is taken care of. Let's go ahead and run that and take a look at the directory. And you can see now we have this out.txt file in my project directory and it says save this text as we would have expected it to. So that's really all there is to buffered output streams. You just initialize them with their respective stream that you want to put in there for input or output and it'll take care of the rest. Just make sure you use that flush method when you are uh, finished using the buffered output stream. Okay, take care guys.